All right, so this is the last of the Ask Me Anything questions. This category is all about dolls. So if you are averse <laughs> to dolls, just move on because it could get really creepy for you. Uh, so for over 10 years, 11 years, I was in a particular doll hobby, uh, specifically for ball jointed dolls or also known as BJDs. And I got a lot of questions, mostly the same question, asking if I would ever come back to the hobby uh, because I was involved so much into the hobby. Uh, but actually, before I, I answer that question, I think I should answer the first one, which is, what is a BJD? <laughs> what is, are they dolls? Uh, so ball jointed doll, they are a doll that is sculpted by an artist in clay and then cast into resin and they are hollow on the inside strung with elastic so the elastic goes through their whole torso and their legs and their arms and up into their head and then all of their joints are are articulated so ball joints is what <laughs> where the term comes from because they were literally when they were first sculpted there was a little ball in each joint to kind of create the space and you can see like for example on this one this is one of the oldest ball jointed dolls that was created and you can see right here well first of all you can see her elastic but you can see like how the joint really has a very defined ball and that gives them a whole wide range of motion and their hands can be really expressive too because they have you know just joints at the wrist and they have joints at the shoulders the torso often the pelvis hips knees ankles and the head and they can stand on their own and they can hold poses uh, some are better posers than others there are hundreds of artists all around the world now, it started off in Japan uh, with a maker uh, of this guy called Volks. And then it kind of like spread all around the world. I think, I haven't been in the hobby in many years, but last, <laughs> last I heard, I mean, no, uh, South Korea like definitely uh, brought up the bulk of the companies that made dolls like this in this style with the resin casting and the articulated joints. Uh, and so because they came, you know, started off in Japan, I think that was heavily influenced by like a more animated style. Um, and their eyes are a little bit big and their nose is maybe a little bit small. Now there's companies that make super, super realistic dolls. So these are all much less realistic. Um, and she's kind of, she's kind of a mess. Um, but so, you know, just as everything else, like fashion, doll fashion has like how these are sculpted and styled, it has gone in, in many different directions. They also come in a lot of different sizes. So traditionally this is called like an SD60 or Super Dolphy 60 centimeters. Uh, and then this is like an MSD, Mini Super, Super Dolphy, which is generally around 43 centimeters. And again, like it just depends on the company and the artist. So there can be a lot of range but generally there's these different categories. There's even smaller um, sizes as well, like super tiny. And then there's also ones that are even bigger. Like actually there's a huge one that I was created a while back. I don't know what size that is, but it can wear toddler clothes basically. So anyways, that is what a Dolphy or a BJD is. And she's got, she is the best poser and she has like really elaborate um, construction that just really holds the poses so well. She can balance on one foot and they're really fun to take pictures of and to create stories for and to make dresses or outfits, shoes, wigs. 
So they all are inherently bald and they require a wig and they also when don't have their eyes are removable and you hold them in with eye putty so that's another like way to customize them all of these dolls i painted the faces of um which is a really big part of the hobby because you're basically buying a blank canvas that was created by an artist and then you're taking their art and then turning it into your own piece of art by customizing painting fo photographing it creating a story creating clothes uh, and so on and so forth. I actually did face painting commissions for a little while in which people were sending me their doll heads and, and it was paid work. Uh, it was a little bit stressful <laughs> because these dolls are one, expensive, two, mean a lot to people and they become like, you know, something, these objects that people are really attached to. And so it's just, it was a lot of responsibility. And then sometimes the instructions would be a little vague, like I want them to have this kind of personality and how I translate that and how they would translate it in their head could be two very different things. But anyways, that's neither here nor there. I don't know why I started rambling on about that. Okay, so that's in a nutshell what these dolls are. <sighs> okay, so moving on to the most popular question involving the BJDs is, will I ever return to the hobby? Uh, and that is, I just don't know. It was a huge part of my life. Like I said, for over 10 years, it like was something that I discovered before I met my ex-husband and all through our marriage together. And then a little bit after our marriage. So it was like a huge chunk of my adult life in which I was consumed by playing with dolls, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, so I just don't know. A lot of my hobbies do come full circle. Obviously, I still have a good amount of dolls, and I have a ton of clothes and accessories. Uh, in fact, you can see, like, here's a bunch of eyes and different hands. Um, here's some things that I sculpted, like little tiny, teeny tiny mushrooms. I don't know if my camera will focus like wanting to focus on my face, but very small mushrooms that I had sculpted actually for her, her world. And the, like a little mortar and pestle and <laughs> just little things like that. I used to bind little books, I made purses, I made that purse actually. I did make some clothes, although nothing that any of them are wearing I made. Oh, except this scarf, but that's not anything particularly impressive. <laughs> uh, so, do you ever miss any of your, the old hobbies uh, that come with the BJDs, like making outfits and writing stories? Of course, absolutely all the time. It was such a huge creative outlet. And like I said before, it was just, it's a really holistic hobby in which you can express yourself in so many different ways. And everybody has a different approach to it, whether you're just simply a collector or you're someone that wants to like do elaborate painting or someone that likes to make the clothing or the wigs or the eyes or take pictures or do stop motion or write stories maybe I already said that or create props and dioramas there's just so many things and it's a really incredible hobby and it's very consuming <laughs> so I think that's part of what kind of like I don't know, if I go back into the hobby, I will go back knowing that it is so consuming, both like creatively, energetically, and financially. So it's it's a lot to get back in, and it's hard to just dabble. So, so yes, I do miss it. Are you thinking of doing any more BJD content in the future? I don't really know, to be honest. It just really depends on what I'm inspired and by and what I'm doing. Uh, if it's something that I do like start to tiptoe back into, maybe I will. Um, maybe I would create a different channel for that again, which kind of brings me to another question, and that is what happened to your other channel? So I had a, a YouTube channel that was dedicated entirely to these dolls. It was Denali Wind, and I 
had that channel for like 10 years and it was a space where I shared um, how I painted them, how uh, or the stories that I made for them or like unboxing of new dolls or a wig creation or uh, character introductions, it just like was everything. I did a couple of stop motions, I did a lot of like stories, photo stories, where I took different stories, like more like a comic panel and, and turned them, them into like a visual storytelling. Uh, it was just, a, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> and I deleted it. So that's what another question is, is why did you delete your old videos? And uh, it was primarily because I had gotten a divorce and this is like, it's it may seem really irrelevant, but I got a divorce and my whole world just kind of went And after the dust had finally settled, I was like building my life back up again. And I was recreating the person that I now could be because I wasn't uh, Alicia married to so-and-so where my whole life was like about that partnership and all the things that we were doing together and so I had I felt like I needed to recreate myself and so I kind of like did a purge of all these things that were a part of my my past life and also <laughs> I was starting to like step out into the dating world and to be honest knowing that my channel like it would be so easy to look up my name and find that channel with thousands of videos about dolls it made me a little uncomfortable <laughs> and so I just was like in this crazed phase of my life I just deleted it and I actually really do regret it because it was just such a big part of my life and it's really sad that all of that is gone and all that storytelling and all just everything and the community that was a part of it and just ugh, I, I do regret it but it was just an important step for me at that time uh, let's see oh and then another question is how come you left um I think I was just I reached a point in which I felt kind of done like I had explored so many different ways uh, and also, you know, I felt my life had been really derailed and I was also really focusing at the time on playing cello. So that kind of took over my life. Uh, and I had like a career change and I wasn't making as much money. And that also played a little bit of a role in it because these, this is a really expensive hobby. Um, and I felt burned out. It just, you know, it was so consuming for so long and I just was like, I can't, I'm done. I need to put these guys away because now they're starting to feel like a, a burden. And yeah, and there's probably a million other reasons and I just can't remember because it was a couple of years ago at this point. Uh, let's see. Just seeing if I answered. Oh, and then the other one was, uh, wondering if I had kept any of my dolls and if so do I have them on display ever um, so I have kept I've kept four dolls I had a lot of dolls at one point I don't know what the the max amount of dolls I had at, at any given point in time there was a lot of fluctuation a lot of like um, selling a doll to buy a new one to create the character a little bit differently or to like get rid of one character and make a new character so there's a lot of exchange um, Anyways, I haven't been displaying them because I have, <laughs> every time I've considered it, I pull them out and I, they look they look so wrecked. They're such a mess. They're so neglected. And I just, I feel sad and I feel guilty and I feel shame. And so I'm just like, I can't deal with this right now. <laughs> and so back in your little bag, you go, all four of these dolls have been living in this Volks. This is a Volks company made doll carrier this, this like hobby is serious like you could buy a doll carrier for your doll uh, I went to a doll convention which was so much fun uh, and <laughs> anyways so yeah it what was I I just lost my train of thought oh no oh do I ever keep them on display 
no, because it just has felt like too much of a burden, and I and I'm sad by how how messy they are. Um, he, for example, is like um, so. Another thing, oh, this camera is not focusing. It's not focusing on my face. Can I touch it? Will that help? Okay, that helped a little actually. Um, I painted his nails. His whole body has been painted. He has tattoos and birthmarks and freckles everywhere. And uh, I put a lot of work into this particular one. His feet are painted, but he is stained all over and you can't really see it because it's from the clothes, I guess, from being stored with all those clothes on, uh, which I do remember like, is a thing that people would say, don't store your dolls for a prolonged period of time with clothes on because they could stain. And he did. <laughs> it's just kind of sad. Um, just looking, seeing if there's anything else that I wanted to share. And I think that's it. I think I answered all of those questions. So yeah, that's, that was a much shorter segment than the other ones. Thank you all again for watching. I think at the very end of this video, I'll just do like a close up of all the dolls and then you can see how I've organized all the clothes and accessories that I have for them as well. So I'll see you all later. Bye. Okay, just a really quick update because after making that BJD question video, I felt so inspired to just hang out with my dolls again. <laughs> and I spent the the afternoon organizing all of the clothes and redressing them. And then that led to creating a craft. I actually built a bookshelf for them. And uh, I'll, I actually recorded all of it and made a video and I think I'll post it. I hope you all don't mind. Um, I think it should be fun, even if you're not into dolls, although maybe you'll be horrified, I don't know. But anyways, uh, there was a question asking if I ever had my dolls on display, and I said no, but after that and taking the time to kind of hang out and just revisit them, I was like, you know what? Why not? Let's put one on display. So. Here we go. And this is the little bookshelf that I built and the crates that I made. I planted some live plants. And he's just sitting atop my desk. 